friends. Ever wonder if stem cells could cure any health condition? And could the supplement be the answer to activating your stem cells for pennies? Or for just a few thousand dollars and a trip down south, you can actually get some stem cells injected into your vein, your joints, your muscles, your spinal fluid, and up your nose. Seriously, to do what? Aspirate and choke on it and give you a headache and meningitis? So in this video, let's talk about what stem cells actually do, how to activate the stem cells already inside you, and what doctors are actually allowed to do with stem cells. Because if you search randomly online, you'll likely be misled. And they won't tell you that your immune system, it is literally powered by stem cells. And your immune system can literally heal your body. Yep. While in few are offering radical out of the box stem cell solutions, you know, what if the real answers are already inside you? What if your stem cells just need the right environment to thrive? A friend of mine had a cut on her leg that wouldn't heal for months. He put some ointment and a band aid, and when he took the band aid out, he got another wound because the band aid pulled some of his skin off. So now he had two wounds that struggle to heal. Did you know you need stem cells to heal those wounds? And eventually those two giant wounds, they did form scabs over several weeks and they were so itchy that he had to resist picking them. Now he assumed the slow healing was because he was growing old, aging, right? Well, what happens with age? We get so many insults that the stem cells that we are born with and that multiply in us, it can't activate an environment of constant stress, poor sleep, and a diet built on convenient fast foods, missing essential micronutrients. So supposedly he didn't eat a lot of meat, right? Because a lot of people think meat's bad. And what was he eating? Well, mostly refined carbs. Is that really better? And do you want to know what he did? He ate not only the right foods, but he ate the right amounts of those foods. So you must be curious, what did he eat? Well, the food that he ate counteracted the constant oxidative stress. We all have it. Stress begets more stress with more stress hormones, lack of sleep, and as a result, we start craving for nutrient poor food. And all of this increases cellular damage and suppresses our own stem cells inside our bodies. And when this oxidative damage accumulates, your body, it enters into a protective shutdown. But when you add foods that can protect the cells from damage, that will power your stem cells because it fosters a healthy environment. And when your stem cells are powered, your immune cells are powered. Number one are mushrooms. There are roughly two to 3,000 mushroom species that are considered edible worldwide. Although only about 100 are commonly cultivated and widely consumed, and far fewer are eaten regularly in the Western diet. Many more are edible in traditional cultures, but they're not really commercialized. So what makes mushrooms interesting is, specifically from a stem cell perspective and immunity perspective, is that they shape the biological environment that allows stem cells to survive, self-renew, and differentiate properly. And as I mentioned before, stem Stem cells are extremely sensitive to oxidative stress, inflammation, mitochondrial damage, and immune dysregulation. But mushrooms, they actually act upstream all those systems. Mushrooms are rich with beta-glucans, unique polysaccharides that bind to receptors such as Dectin-1 and CR3 on your immune cells. It improves immune surveillance while reducing chronic inflammation. And this matters because chronic inflammation, that begets chronic inflammatory signal which pushes stem cells toward exhaustion and abnormal differentiation. Compounds in mushrooms such as ergothionine, a sulfur-containing antioxidant that humans cannot synthesize, it accumulates in the mitochondria and protects DNA and cellular membranes from oxidative injury. There are several mushrooms including lion's mane, reishi, mataki, cordyceps, that also influence nerve growth factor, AMK signaling, mitochondrial biogenesis, and insulin sensitivity, all of which indirectly supports healthier stem cell niches in the gut, brain, muscle, and bone marrow. Did you know that the largest living organism on earth is a honey fungus, Amarillia oistoi? It covers approximately 3.4 square miles in Oregon. It is estimated to be thousands of years old, and it weighs as many thousands of tons. And what makes this remarkable is that the visible mushrooms are just the fruiting bodies. The real organism is a 
mycelium, which is an underground network of fungal threads that behaves more like a biological internet than a plant or animal. And this mycelial network allows fungi to communicate chemically, redistribute nutrients, and adapt rapidly to environmental stress. So when you're eating a mushroom, you're literally only eating the fruiting body of the fungus that is so far deeper in the ground. Fungi are biologically unique because they are neither plant nor animal, yet share features of both. They digest externally by secreting enzymes into their environment, breaking down complex compounds that other organisms cannot touch. And this is why fungi are essential recyclers of life on earth. They can decompose lignin, petroleum products, pesticides, plastics, and even some radioactive compounds. Through a process known as microremediation, certain fungi are being used experimentally to clean oil spills, detoxify soil, absorb heavy metals, and restore damaged ecosystems. Their cell walls, they bind toxins, while their enzymes dismantle chemical structures that persist for decades in the environment. Now, in that sense, fungi represent both a biological solution to clean, recycle, redistribute, and regenerate for the earth. In the human body, when you eat edible fungi, they help restore balance in immune signaling, oxidative stress, and metabolism, creating conditions where repair systems, including stem cells, can function optimally. Now, far too many people underappreciate the consequences of inflammation. Chronic, low-grade inflammation, it sends constant do not repair messages throughout the body. And ultra-processed foods and low fiber foods, especially when that's predominantly your diet, will amplify that negative signal. The best way to increase fiber is to add more nuts, seeds, beans, intact grains, and fruit. It can help with calming the immune signaling. And when you drop inflammation, stem cells receive permission to work. And when you eat mushrooms, they are a great source of dietary fiber and protein. But like everything else, there are thousands of mushrooms and not all of them are equal in fiber or protein content. Cooked mushrooms are low in calories and they contribute a modest amount of fiber and protein. But the value of mushrooms is not necessarily about quantity, but more of the type of fiber and the bioactive compounds that are attached to their fiber. So one cup of cooked white button mushrooms, it provides roughly one to 1.5 grams of fiber and about two to three grams of protein. Now, it doesn't sound like much, and this depends on the cooking method and the water loss. Now, shiitake mushrooms are slightly higher with about two to three grams of fiber and three to four grams of protein. And that is per cooked cup. If you've eaten oyster mushrooms, that falls into a similar range. Matake can reach closer to four grams of fiber per cup. And that of course is cooked. The fiber in mushrooms is largely chitin, beta-glucans, and other non-starchy polysaccharides, which are structurally different from plant fibers. That's why you can't lump all fibers in the same category. Fibers found in grains and legumes, they affect the gut and immune system differently per gram of weight. Let's compare protein. When you compare mushroom protein and other protein sources, there is another contrast. So a cup of cooked lentils, that contains easily 18 grams of proteins. Chickpeas, about 14 to 15 grams of protein. Tofu, about 20 grams of protein. And even if you ate eggs, that would be 12 grams for two large eggs. Now compare that to a chicken breast, which is roughly 26 grams to a three ounce serving. So mushrooms are clearly not a primary protein source when you compare quantity and volume. However, mushroom protein, it does have a favorable amino acid profile relative to its calorie load. An important fact is that mushrooms contain very little methionine and it comes packaged with fiber and other nutrients like potassium, selenium, ergothionine, and beta-glucans. Chicken breast doesn't have that. This makes mushrooms metabolically different from animal protein, which lacks fiber and tends to activate mTOR and IGF-1. These signaling molecules promote growth 
And if you want to avoid cancer, you can't overpromote growth. So in practical terms, mushrooms function best as protein extenders, meaning they lower inflammation and reduce the insulin burden of a meal. And they add volume so you have early satiety. It also supports your gut microbiome because of the immune supporting compounds. And rather than just using mushrooms as a main protein anchor, it should be supplemental. A couple of years ago, I went to a basketball game for the very first time in Washington, D.C. And at the arena, we were eating dinner. And so I didn't like any of their options. They didn't have any beans or tofu. And they were just mostly filled with junk food, like buttered popcorn, chips, hot dogs, and burgers. But they did have one thing that I liked, and that was mushroom tacos. And it was actually so delicious that I ate like three servings of them because I was so hungry after eating their small mushroom tacos. Honestly, I would rather have added some beans to those servings because it would have been heartier, filled me up, would have given me more protein. But sometimes you don't have that option. Hi friends, I am so thrilled that you wanna take charge of your health and take charge of your food. Now, I know nutrition can be complex, but it doesn't have to be. And I'm here to support you in this lifelong journey. So if you point your camera app to this QR code, it'll take you to a link for a free handout that I created just for you. And if you like it, if you want to see other handouts, please go to the link in my show notes and then you can leave me your feedback on what I could do to help you in your journey. Okay, back to the video now. Beans also feed the gut microbiome in a way that directly affects stem cell niches. They contain soluble fiber, resistant starch, both of which are fermented into short chain fatty acids that reduce inflammation. Stuff like butyrate. Now these byproducts like butyrate, they're signaling molecules that really fuels your colonic cells. They are energy molecules to help strengthen your gut barrier prevent you from getting diverticulosis and reduces systemic endotoxin exposure, right? It propels stuff to go through. A healthier gut barrier, it reduces chronic immune activation, which is so bad for so many things, including your stem cells. So what you eat directly affects the stem cells in your bone marrow, the stem cells outside of your body in the fat tissue. And when we come to your intestines, butyrate, it really helps the intestinal stem cell turnover. It prevents both excessive proliferation and burnout. And from an immune perspective, beans are a powerhouse food. They're cheap, they're affordable, they're delicious. They are so anti-inflammatory. They are rich in polyphenols, magnesium, packed with protein. They have potassium, they have folate, they have zinc, and they are fiber rich. All of these molecules, they modulate your immune signaling, promote DNA repair, and promote stem cell proliferation. Because the opposite is chronic inflammation, which shortens your telomere, accelerates stem cell aging. So this is why I eat beans every day. It dampens those inflammatory cytokines, such as TNF-alpha and interleukin-6, while it supports regulatory immune pathways. This creates a healthy environment that favors tissue repair rather than this constant struggling of repair or an immune alarm that's even worse. And the protein quality in beans are stellar. And that's another way they influence stem cells. They are also relatively low in methionine compared to animal protein for sure. And this is important because high methionine, remember it activates mTOR excessively. And when you have persistent mTOR activation, well, that's just associated with accelerated aging and stem cell exhaustion. So plant proteins from beans, they provide essential amino acids without overdriving growth signals, allowing stem cells to remain responsive rather than depleted. Now, another underappreciated mechanism is detoxification and cellular protection. People do detox regimens once or twice a year, that should be done every day. So when you eat beans, it binds to bile acids, heavy metals, and environmental toxins in your gut, and it reduces their reabsorption. And what this does is that it lowers your toxin burden inside your body. It lessens your oxidative stress and DNA damage, lessens your cholesterol. All this activates your stem cells, which are particularly vulnerable to environmental toxins because you're constantly dividing. The quickest cell that divides the fastest in your body is your nutrient that's an immune cell. Beans also supply antioxidants that protect mitochondria function and healthy mitochondria are essential for healthy stem cells. Another component of stem cell activation is blood flow. Blood supplies oxygen
oxygen and nutrients. And when your circulation is slow and sluggish, well, it just stalls, right? Foods that support your circulation are beans. They help to restore that delivery. Also, another food are leafy greens because they're nitrate rich that dilate your blood vessels. Nitric oxide improves microcirculation to tissues, especially ones that need repair. Unfortunately, white rice and noodles, they may fill you up and they taste great, but they don't have the ingredients that support repair. So what finally helped wasn't a procedure of therapy, it was proper nourishment of your stem cells to thrive. And when you give your body the right nutrients, specifically micronutrients, they not only heal wounds, but they lower inflammation, improve blood flow, and literally power your immune system by powering your stem cells. Nothing about this is dramatic. You don't need a rotor rooter because food will get to those smaller vessels so much better than any physician. It requires steady improvement, working on the problem every day, not doing it once in a while, right? Wounds can close overnight potentially, but if we don't have these micronutrients, they struggle because stem cells struggle. But when you supply beans and leafy greens, you improve circulation. You essentially improve your ability to repair because you're activating your stem cells. You're giving them nutrients and energy and you're bringing them to places where they are needed. This list, I hope, empowers you to power your stem cells because your body needs support. What these clinics don't tell you is the good news. If you're alive and walking, you basically have an immune system that's pretty competent. And the goal in life is not to just randomly get some. It's how do you activate your own stuff and avoid all the stuff that suppresses them? Literally, your entire body is full of stem cells waiting to be activated. And if you feel like you have a weak immunity, if you're struggling and constantly getting colds, maybe allergy symptoms, maybe fatigue or aches and pains, then your stem cells simply aren't doing their job. Because if they did their job right, you would feel good and you would not be struggling with these symptoms. So the question is, why aren't they doing their job? Ideally, more and newer stem cells seem to be better, right? But do you really need to get them injected? And for most of us, the answer is going to be no. Have you ever bought seeds, planted them, and nothing ever grew? Or what's worse is that you picked up an infestation of bugs from those seeds. And that is a problem with these random stem cell clinics offering stem cell therapy. They can give you the stem cells, but it doesn't mean that any of the stem cells are actually going to help you. And in fact, you may get some serious buggy complications. And if you're still interested in searching online, you'll find lots of false claims by websites with supposedly board certified medical doctors endorsing their clinic. But when you look them up, they are nowhere to be found. I'm not denying stem cell therapy could potentially be the miracle cure for for certain conditions like blood cancers. But most clinics, they offer stem cell treatments, including injections of fat-derived stem cells, placenta or amniotic stem cells, exosomes, or other unprocessed cellular products. They are not FDA approved and should be considered experimental and unproven outside of controlled clinical trials. And in America, basically outside of blood cancers, I don't know of any other FDA approved use for stem cells. So you'd better off spending those thousands of dollars on real food that reduces inflammation for the entire ear, not some nasal spray that you're just going to squirt up your nose and choke on. Your diet is probably draining your energy faster than your body could replace it. It's inhibiting your stem cells, refined carbohydrates. That requires B vitamins and minerals to process. But those foods, they don't supply an adequate amount of them. Sure, in one sense, we do fortify grains. And this was an effective public health measure to address the life-threatening nutrient deficiency that was rampant in America at one point. But the thing is, have we solved one solution and then traded it for another? So at one point, we were starving from the lack of food. And now we have a plethora of chronic metabolic diseases because we've trained several generations of people that eating refined flours fortified when nutrients are okay. Is this really okay? Did Italy do this? Italy have some of the longest living people on earth. They actually taught people how to eat. They didn't fortify their grains. So when we teach people how to eat whole foods, it supports their energy. It activates their stem cells. And what are whole foods? Whole grains, whole legumes, whole seeds. These are whole foods. They're rich not only in fiber and in protein and in vitamins, including the plethora of B vitamins, this all supports your mitochondria function and your stem cells. Because without micronutrients, the adequate amount, stem cells stay dormant, they get suppressed. But if you have the right ones, you can propel your stem cells to improve your health and your wellness. And if you want to learn more about that, watch the next video.